everybody, it's Sam at Mix Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I thought I'd start the new year with something really lovely and I have done this storage drawer set to hold my mini ink cubes for the, from the Papercraft Society kit. So um, I, I actually said in one of the unboxing videos, I said, oh, I've got all these ink cubes. If anybody's got any great ideas for storage, let me know. Many of you said about the Tim Holtz little um, kind of tins that he does. And then a few of you said, Sam, why don't you make one? And I, when you said that, I thought, yeah, why don't I? So this is what I've come up with and I adore it. I'm so pleased with this. Now, the lovely thing is, it's just a really nice storage piece. You don't have to put the cubes in, which I have, but it also can be a shelving unit as well. So you don't have to make the drawers. So if I just pull out each drawer here, so you'll see I'm starting to pull, put my cubes in. Now I've done the sizing for these so that it will fit five cubes this way with a little gap. So you have got room to get your fingers in and then four down. Okay, so five, 10, 15, 20, but I've also done it so you can get two layers. So you can get 40 cubes, as long as they are these size cubes, which most are, and these are one and a quarter by three quarters. And um, it's just gonna be lovely. So in total, you'll be able to fit 120 square cubes in just this little unit, which I think is just such a nice little piece. So that is where my kind of idea for it has come for these. But I'll show you in this one here, there's the other cubes that I've got. All right, so it just, you know, because if you've, you've had other kits in the past, you get all these little things, you know, these little, um, the drop ones. Um, these are from Hobbycraft, but they're actually, some of them are some really nice colors. And I just forget to kind of go to them. Whereas this now can sit just, it's gonna sit just to the right of me. So it's quite nice to be able to grab the smaller ones because my bigger ones are just behind me. So yeah, it's, it's nice for that. And then I've got the bottom one there as well. So you've got more room. So I have lined these ones. Um, that middle one I've got to line. Um, that's the only one, yeah, this one, I still need to line the inside of um, but it's completely covered in this absolutely stunning paper and then that's what I was meant to show you so if you do want to keep it just as a, a, sh a shelving piece then you've got that and that would look lovely but also when you've made one you could make a few so you could have maybe two or three of these stacked up just for shelving so you might have papers that you want to put on here obviously the size for this it's going to be six by six that you have to put in because it's coming in at seven and a half. So if you do want to make yours for eight by eight, you'd have to extend these pieces and obviously adapt a few more of the other measurements. But you could also just have maybe, you know, one drawer and the rest as shelves. So it's really nice that you've got the option to play around with it. And I'm certainly thinking now of extending so that this is on top and then I have a shelving piece on the bottom maybe or double the drawers. I don't know, it's really nice now that once you've done this and you see how to do it, it's very easy to adapt and to make you know, bigger, smaller, whatever, but it's also given me a lot more inspiration to make some beautiful desk storage pieces that are gonna last. You know, this stuff, once you've added your paper, I've used Kalau glue over all of this and it's just strengthening to become a really strong piece. It will make a beautiful gift or just make it for yourself, which I've done for me. Um, it's using one of my favorite paper pads, which I'll show you in a moment. So it's nice to use it on something that I'm gonna get to appreciate and everything just does just works so so well so let me show you how to make this really lovely piece of storage okay so this is the paper pad i've used it's a 12 by 12 a touch of romance by the paper tree i got this one at craft stash it should still be available because it isn't a christmas paper so hopefully those ones you know will still be there because i think most people have obviously been buying christmas papers of late so this one i have used before and it's just so pretty and i wanted to again i, I do say it a lot but when you've got a beautiful paper some people don't like to cut into it if i'm making something for myself then i love to cut into the papers and this is just going to be a really pretty storage piece in my craft room with this gorgeous paper so yeah that's what you'll see throughout so first of all I've got lots of pieces here and I've already done two of the drawers so what I would say is when you're making this is make your drawers first because what you can do from there is when you start to build the case if you are slightly out with any of the measurements you can adapt it whereas if you make the case first and then you find your drawers don't fit it's just uh, going to be very frustrating so it's always best to do the drawers first and plus you may well be making yours bigger you may be making it longer in terms of the drawer size so there's once you see how this is put together there's lots of ways to adapt it which I know many of you will do. So here I have what's needed for one of the drawers and then everything here is what we need to construct the 
main case that it's all going to come in and I will talk you through all of that. So I've used the 5mm foam board, I get mine from Hobbycraft, I get the A3 size and it's either three or four sheets that you get for £10. I'm still using the same ones that I purchased originally which I've made many of my Christmas projects with and I have this project and another one still to come as well using the same amount of that. And I've got lots of off cuts now, bits like this which I'm keeping in like a tub so that then if I do need to go and make any smaller bits and pieces these will come in handy. It's very easy to make so you're going to need three pieces for the base of the, each drawer and this will all be listed in my blog like this so I will list the measurements for the drawers then I'll list the measurements for the shelves because you can also have this as I've mentioned as a separate shelving storage piece and I will then list all the measurements just for the you know the main kind of case that it all sits in just so it's easy for you to follow and especially if you're doing it in like over a few days you might want to do the drawers one day and so on so it'd be easy for you to follow so you want three pieces, base of the drawers that are seven and a quarter by six. All right. Now, obviously, these measurements that I'm giving you were based on me being able to fit this amount of cubes going along and then four going along this side so that you can fit, what did I say it was, 5, 10, 15, 20, so 40 cubes per drawer, which I thought was a nice amount. Okay, so then you want two pieces for the sides and these are going to be five and three quarters by one and seven eighths of an inch, okay, and they're going to go here. Then you want, these two are slightly different sizes because the front of the drawer actually will stick along the front of the base. Okay, just so we get more room within this piece. So this is for the front of the drawer, and this is two and one eighth. So you see it's slightly um, wider by, again, by seven and a quarter. And then this is for the back of the drawer, and this is the same as the side. So this is one and seven eighths of an inch, and it's that same length again, seven and a quarter. So first of all, get the largest, you know, that two and a quarter piece, and you're going to stick it on the front here. Okay, so we're going to run glue along there and we're going to stick it along the bottom of that piece there. So tip for this as well, when you're gluing larger areas, like when I done my advent, a few people were saying that they couldn't glue the whole area before the glue had already started to set. I don't have that problem because I leave my glue gun on for a good half an hour before I start any of these projects. When it's that hot, the glue will take a good five minutes to completely set rock hard. I want it to get really really hot so this has been on a long time I've made sure I've got a nice you know long glue stick in there so again along this bit here and you're only doing this on the and I can see just how runny that glue is it's just not going to set and it gives you a lot of time to reposition so do yeah top tip leave your glue gun on you know a little bit longer before you start so there it is and then you're just going to stick this piece along there and let the glue ooze out because what you can do is wipe it away again just before it's it's kind of set it won't burn you it will just be warm to touch but you can easily kind of rub it away so just make sure you keep it on a nice right angle like so and then I can just go along here and just it will kind of like peel off and just get those lumpy bits off don't worry about you know any other if you know there's the odd bit you can always pick it off with your knife, your um, cutting knife, but also you're going to cover it with paper, so don't worry too much. If you get any lumpy bits as well here, just go in with your pokey tool and again you'll be able to kind of pick it away like so. All right, because some of those pieces may well interfere with your paper when you're going to cover it inside, so just kind of, yeah, just get your pokey tool in there and just take away any of those clumpy bits. You shouldn't have too much. You don't want to go crazy with the glue because it's hot enough. It will spread, but just take away any of the bulk. But now you'll see that's the front of one of our drawers. Next, you want to stick the sides, which are going to go inside and on top of this piece. And then the base, um, then the back one will go on top along there. So, like so. And then again, go right up to the edge. And just you cut time there to move it right up and squeeze in the sides there. And again, I can just rub that off there. Okay, and do the same on that end. And now this piece will go and sit along the back, like so. 
all right so what you want to do is run some glue um, yeah if you run your glue just right on the edges there and then along the bottom and again keep everything at a right angle so you can move this in a foam so it's, it's it is a nice material to work with so the more I've started to use this the more I'm really enjoying it okay and there's my draw now I've obviously gone a little bit off when I went to cut the this one here because can you see it slightly goes down that's not going to interfere with the stuff inside because I've given you room you see there so that you can get your fingers in and pull things out but it will also helps if you are slightly off but when you've got something like that because I want to cover it with my paper I'm just going to bring in my knife just to tidy it up I'm going to use that one and because this is the back so the front is the piece that is stuck you should have it looking like that nice you know just one piece whereas on the back you'll see the foam so make sure that's the front but with the back piece what I've done on all of them is I've gone in with my knife on an angle and it just kind of tidies it all off anyway cuts away any kind of glue that you might have so I'm just going to go all the way along and just trim that off so now you've got that kind of angled piece you see there and it's also just tidied that up now so you wouldn't have you know you wouldn't have known because this is the front this is all okay that's just where you're pushing it in so I'd rather that was all kind of tidied off at the back so that is a tray so you want to do it three times so the time consuming part with this project is cutting all your pieces and obviously making sure you keep everything nice and straight once you've done these pieces the decoration is really fun so you want to do that three times so that then you will have your three like this then you want to cover it all so the way you cover it is to be honest completely up to you and you don't even have to cover all inside I just quite liked seeing that in there and obviously not everybody's going to use it for their cubes and I may well end up changing it you know in <laughs> months to come because I I love to move my craft room around does anybody else do that I do anyway so um, you know I may find that I want to put something else in here so Decorating the inside is, is optional, but the front piece, all I've done for that one, is you can cover them all separate and then stick them together. That's, you know, entirely up to you as well. But all I've done is I've just ran some of my thin red tape along the top of this piece. Again, I'm working on the front, so that's solid piece. And just trim that off. And then I've just cut a piece of card or paper here from that pad and this is the same length of this piece here so it's seven and a quarter okay and then I've done it by four but that's you know again you don't have to you basically you want to be able to stick this on the front it's going to wrap around the front and then just tidy under the under here I'm going to cover the bot the underside of this at a later you know I, you don't need to watch me do that on camera but you can see that I've covered underneath obviously all the sides and everything um, but you just measure them and, and cut your paper to size so that's easy to do so I'm just going to take the backing off of that piece and then I'm just going to use I've used my Kalau glue for all of this and it's worked really really well because this is a, a shiny surface I thought mm, I don't know if it's going to really um, be the best one to use but actually it's, it has and it's, it's added that strength as well which the Kalau does so just need to I need to refill this one I'm just going to cover all the front and I'll add the glue to the underside in a moment but I'm just going to stick this along there and then just wrap that around and then I'm just going to add glue to the overhang of that pattern paper and stick it underneath you can just push it down like so and then just add some pressure from the top side okay and that's the front decorator because I know a lot of people will just do that they're not going to be bothered by any of that and that is all you're going to see but I wanted to do a contrast so that is going to be my middle drawer so that again it just shows off more of the nice papers but can you see now when they stack and once I've added my little butterfly handles it's going to look so so sweet so that moves me on nicely to the handles now these here I picked up from a shop called biology but they are I believe by just that craft brand, the one that's stocked in the range, it's stocked in, um, where's that other place, like the works, things like that. So they are just brads, but they're really thick metal ones. So I put some hot glue behind that piece, pierce them in, and then kind of, you know, um, 
I've bent the insides and it's just given me these really nice little handles so you, you know look at other things you might have you don't have to buy proper handles although you can with these you can get the ones with the screw you can screw them in you don't want to go too tight with the screw because it's a foam obviously it's, although it's a hard foam you don't want to obviously push it too much but even just some really strong you know glue use your hot glue and just a nice um, button or a bead or something will look lovely there and I know lots of you will probably have some great ideas so to get the position and all I've done is I've put my ruler along so this is just over two inches high I just put my ruler so it, it sits you know along the bottom of the drawer there and then I came in at two inches and then again on this side here, so it's seven and a quarter, although that's just, this is a different ruler. See that ruler, it says seven and a quarter, this one it's just a smidge under. So I'm just going to move that so it is at seven and a quarter. And then just come down two inches, which will be five and a quarter. And I'm just putting a little um, marker there with my pokey tool. And then I just pierced using the metal on these because it's so strong. And that's how I just put it into place. So let me just push that one in so you can see now I've just kind of pierced through but as I push it in I'm going to put some hot glue in there so that stays attached so again this one here and the nice thing with this is you can change these you know if they do over time because I'm you know, probably going to be going to this quite a lot you know they probably will end up coming away or loosening I can put a different you know you can just put another piece of pattern paper on you can change it so it's easy to kind of yeah change with your mood kind of thing and your style so I'm just going to go in here pull it out a little bit further there we go I'm just going to pop some hot glue in there because you won't see any of it and then just push that down okay so they're all nicely secured now and then inside you just push them in I just use my pokey tool you can kind of do it yourself and then just push it down over each other and then just cover it with your pattern paper like so so they're nice and flat and you can see there once it's all covered you don't see anything so you know the paper to cover the back of this is seven and a quarter by you know the width of what you've done but because I've gone in on an angle there you want to measure from that piece so it's now it's just coming under just coming in under six but it's easier for you to measure it yourself and cut to what you need because I don't want to give you that measurement and yours might be a little bit bigger and then you've wasted paper because you've cut it smaller so it's very easy to do and like I said I think most people will just do this way anyway um yeah so get to that point all your drawers done and all decorated nicely and now we're going to move on to the case okay so what you want to do first of all is you want to decorate the lid and the base so these are both the same size um, and these pieces measure seven by eight and a quarter all right so two pieces now you don't have to have foam board for the base you might want to use gray board you might use something different but I've already gone ahead and covered this one now I don't know whether it's going to be the base or the lid so I, it does look nice against the floral print of that bottom drawer let me just see there obviously everything will be stuck better later um, but then it would look nice as the lid as well because that's floral so I'm just looking through my pad here just to see whether I go plain or not or I might do something with this stripe but have a little bit of the floral print kind of coming in See, that could look really pretty and you get to see that on top. Yeah, that's what I'm going to go for. So I'm going to do, so I've still got that stripey element. I'm going to keep that one on the bottom, have this for the top. And you just cover them just like I would an album cover for a mini album. So I'm just going to bring this down because what I, obviously I want to make sure I get that nice corner of that spray, but then the rest is going to be stripey. So if I just fold that there, I would say have one inch overhang. So you want a piece of pattern paper that's going to be, so it will be an inch on each side, so eight, so ten and a quarter by seven, eight by nine. Okay, so I'm going to get this cut down. Okay, so I've just trimmed that down, and then you just want to stick this in the middle of that piece of paper that you've just cut. And you're going to do this twice because, like I said, the base and the lid are exactly the same sides size. I'm just going to fill up my bottle here. Yeah, that's better that's what I use that's the thousand mil one that I buy it works out much better value for money and then I just decant it into this smaller bottle 
So just cover all of your side and just try and get it as close to the middle really. Like I said, you want about that one inch overhang. And then I'm gonna stick this, again, the corners all the same way. So I just cover about an inch down and then all of that. So the three kind of pieces there and then just bring it in on an angle and stick it down so you get a square stuck on the actual foam board. And again, like I said, if you're using, you can use gray, um, gray board for this. You don't have to use the foam if you don't want to. And then I'm just gonna bring in, pop a little bit of glue actually, so it's along the side there as well. In fact, just lift that up. You wanna put some glue on the sides of that piece as well. I'm just gonna let that grab and just go around and do all the other corners. And then I can just go back to the one at the beginning and just kind of start to shape that card or paper around the foam board there. And then you just wanna add glue over all of the side and along the side of the foam board. And then I just like to use my bone fold and just kind of come under, first of all, just kind of start it off there, but just lift it around. And then you just fold it all over and just let that all do its thing. And you'll get a really nice cover and it'll be nice and strong as well. Okay, and then you can just kind of push the corners with your bone folder and it will make them all the same, nice and, you know, rounded and just push it like so. I'm really pleased with that. I love the way I've just got that nice little part there. So, oh, it looks so pretty. Oh my gosh, this looks absolutely adorable and it's not even finished yet. But look, if I just bring that up, hang on, I'm trying to just get it roughly how it's going to look. Look, isn't that lovely? Can't really tell, but anyway. So yeah, I'm gonna go for that on top. It makes me want to add like a nice little handle, even though I'd never do that, but it's almost like I want it to be like a little carry kind of vanity or something. Anyway, so you'll do that twice. You have the base. I just need to do my corners there. You may want to put your little metal corner protectors on this. You can. It's much thicker than the grey board ones that I use. So whether they will go over this, you might have to look at the measurements and get deeper ones, but you can certainly do that. Okay. I love this bit now because I get to put it all together. So next you want, we need to do, let me just think about this, the order we want to do this all in. Okay, so I think it's going to be the sides and the shelves. The back will be the last piece to go on. So you want your base one and then you're going to want to cut two pieces which will be the sides and these are six and a half by seven and then you'll have that's those two and then you'll have two shelves so you'll see I've covered these both differently I covered that one first and I thought it's a bit of a waste covering all of it because you're not going to see it however if you do want to make this as the shelving storage which I said at the beginning then you will want to cover it all because you will see all of that but I haven't done underneath unless someone's going to inspect it but because mine's for drawers I've only done it that little way because that's all you're going to see because these are going to go so your first drawer is just going to slide off of the base piece, but then in between each one will be one of these little shelves that it will sit on. So the nice thing about this one is, is that when you pull the drawer right out, none of your other drawers will collapse down like some storage. So, and they will be slightly shorter. So these will sit back from the drawer. So the drawers look like they're kind of popping out and it will be like that. So again, if I just push that down, so you can see we've got them in between the drawers. So I just thought it just gave it more of a finished look. Now these shelf pieces are slightly, ever so slightly longer or wider than the, the, than the length here of your drawer. You need them to be that little bit longer so that they can stick to the side of the case and the drawer can slide out nicely, but you don't want them to be so big that there's a gap. So, although there will be a slight gap, but here, so you want two pieces. Mine are seven and three eighths of an inch by six and one eighth of an inch. And the length of your drawer 
is seven and a quarter. So I've gone one eighth of an inch longer. And then that'll basically give you one sixteenth of an inch on each side, but that's enough for the drawer to be able to kind of go in and out really nicely. So I'm gonna take that one back again. What you wanna do is you wanna stick these sides on here. You can cover these afterwards. Um, you don't need to cover them now. I'm gonna have rope sides on them, so I'll make sure that sticks out just so that you don't see anything. If I do take the drawers out, but these are gonna stick along the bottom here. So you're gonna be sticking so that you have it, it's the six and a half inch you know, base. That's what you wanna stick along. You don't wanna stick along the seven, okay? Cause that will be the wrong side. Okay, so what you wanna do first of all, is grab one of the side pieces and one of your shelves. Okay, so get them covered so you know where you are and just write on it shelf, write sides when you cut them, okay, because it will make it easier for you. And you want one of your drawers, okay? And what you're gonna do is sit your drawer down on the base piece here so that it is, you know, in the center and towards the front. Don't worry, you know, too much about that for the minute. Stick one of these on top. You wanna make sure that the front of the shelf is flush with the front of this side piece okay so like so get it to the front of the drawer first of all I'm trying to make sure that I'm giving you the most simplest steps it's at the front of the drawer don't worry about the overhang ignore all that because what you're going to do is you're just going to run glue along the side of that piece okay the shelf don't touch the drawer the drawer is there as a guide to make sure that you stick it so that you're getting it as you know at the right height Okay, so there's my hot glue. Then you've got your side piece, want that on the outside, and it's gonna, I'm gonna move that. <laughs> and you wanna bring the drawer so it runs flush with the bottom of the side piece, and that shelf is flush with the front here. So now I can drop the drawer away, and we've got that where we need it. It will not go to the end, you want that, because we've got the back to put on, and that's where that will go. But again, at this point, I would go in and take away any excess because you don't want it to get in the way of the drawer, okay? So, and while it's still that little bit warm, it will just rub off. Okay, so again, pop that in, and you'll see once this base piece we stick to the bottom of this, you've now got the perfect opening for your drawer. And there'd be that tiny little gap, which is the 1 16th, which is what you want. So now you've done that one, you can move the drawer. I wouldn't do the same, probably, well, actually you should do the drawers that you're gonna have, just in case you have cut them slightly different. So I'm just gonna bring that one in and make sure it should all be fine. Yeah, I'm gonna have that one on the bottom because that one fits, seems to fit well. So that is gonna be my middle drawer. So I'm now gonna pop that drawer there and bring in the next shelf, okay? So again, line the shelf up with the front of the drawer and then get your hot glue and just Again, put glue along the side of the shelf, not the drawer. You're not adding any glue to your drawers. And then this time, you're gonna pop the drawer in, like so. And then pop the shelf on. Making sure that that is again flush with the front. And now, once the other side's done, but you see how nicely that's going to come out. And it's got a nice finish at the front there. So now you'll have your two drawers. Now the last one you don't need to do anything with because that's going to be the lid. So that's the, the trickiest part of this. Now what you want to do is grab your other side piece and you're going to stick that on the other side here. But I would say keep the middle drawer in there just so that you keep this nice and straight. See, like so. So, and grab the base one, I think I'm gonna need as well. So, again, keep that drawer in there, and I'm gonna just run hot glue. And then I'm just going to put it on the base, and then just stick that to the side. So I'd use the base just so you can make sure you get them, them even because you don't want to stick it down too far on one side and then not enough on the other. Now I can put that one there. That's the bottom one which is going to go nicely there. Top one is going to go in there and it all fits. Oh my gosh. And this is then the end. This is the top one which should 
just trying to lift this up so you can see it all oh, without that all falling out so I need to put the back on I just can't well I can't well yeah I just can't believe it has all actually come together how I wanted it to isn't it lovely oh my gosh I love it right now we need to cover we need to put the back on so the back's really easy so all you want to do is take all these drawers out so all you're going to do is run glue along here and here and then stick that on the back and it will be the exact you can see there it's the exact height is your side piece this is I don't think I gave the measurements for this one this is seven and seven eighths of an inch by seven okay so I'm just going to run a hot glue this will help kind of square everything off and just really strengthen it you know do pull out the um, the foam board it has got some movement to it so this is what you will have if you don't want to do the drawers and that one we'll just stick that on top in a minute but you will have this nice shelving piece and that does look lovely and you could stack one of these you could make two and you could stack this on top of your ink storage you could put little paper pads in this in fact I didn't think about well because obviously the measurements I've done but mm, seven and a half you could have put eight by eight in there so again if you do want to experiment with the measurements and go bigger and stuff like that but this could become a full-on kind of really nice storage unit you could certainly go taller with it and you know make the measurements work for your kind of space and where you're putting things so I'm now going to um, yeah I'm going to add glue along these top pieces here and make sure that glue gun is nice and hot and you will have plenty of time to be able to do all of these sides I can still see that is really hot and then you want to stick this piece on and it will overlap all of your sides so just make sure you've got a nice equal overhang oh I adore this so much oh my gosh I really am in love with this now also we're going to wrap paper around the sides if you want to do that before you stick the lid on you might find it a bit easier to cut um, but I'm, it's fine this way as well like so and then flip it over and I'm going to get another glue stick and you want to do the same with the base and then you want to stick it on the base exactly the same way so with a nice even overhang you should bring it so that the backs running nice and flush there we go yeah perfect I have a little bit of glue that's oozed out of there it's on the back so you're not really going to see that and I think actually I've just got away with it yeah I've rubbed it off so you don't see that but really kind of push down on there and just try and get away any of that glue that might have oozed out the side and there is your shelving piece all right I think I must have cut a bit funny there but I'm going to wrap that in paper now but I can pop my drawers all in I think that one was on the board so much actually. so there you go they're all oh, I've got stuff in there so it keeps sliding but now you can see they slide out oh, really nicely the more you use them obviously they need to kind of yeah just get settled but then you want two pieces that are seven by eight in pattern paper and the seven inch side will sit perfectly along there but you also want to add a strip of the tape just like I did on the drawers along the fronts here again you might you might wanted to have decorated them before um, you can do I just I don't know you can do it this way and that way you're not really wasting any um, paper in places where it's not going to be seen but it is up to you I still need to decorate the inside of that last drawer so I'm just going to take tape off of that one and then I'm going to cover this whole side with cloud glue and then just the same way I'm going to stick that so it runs nice and straight along that side stick that all down and then just kind of fold it over so you get a really nice finish and then it will just follow down the side there and a minute use your your bone folder or something to just make sure 
you've got no air bubbles and that's all nicely covered. Watch my drawers don't fall out and then just finish it on the back with oh, another bit of glue and then you can just stick that down and then we'll do the same on the other side and then you'll just cut a separate piece of pattern paper for the back and that will conceal these little tabs here or leave it again it's entirely up to you sometimes when you're making stuff for yourself I'm a bit lazy with decorating inside because I just think oh well it's only for me but a lot of these things people make they sell or they you know make for gifts this would make a beautiful gift it really would if you know the color scheme of somebody's maybe their bedroom or their craft room then I think this would make a lovely gift so I'm now going to stick and do the same on the other side okay and then just the last piece this is seven and three quarters by seven and I'm going to add the glue to the back of this and as I always say whenever you make these kind of things if there's any edges and they're maybe not to how you wanted them to be they look a bit rough you can cover it with ribbon trim pom-pom trim embellishments can't use skinny tinsel anymore because that was my go-to for the Christmas projects but you know what I mean there are ways to disguise you know bits and pieces you might have other little ideas for little scenes and other little kind of figures or trees you know some flowers there's all kinds of things you can use but now that will cover that perfectly I absolutely adore this paper it's just stunning and again once that glue sets those of you that use the Kalau now it will just this whole piece will become so strong I just need to make sure my drawers aren't going to slide out so there you have it doesn't that look absolutely gorgeous I really am so pleased with this now you could put it on feet like I said you could stack another one on top again so I mean you may want to have this this as another base and then go from there or you could just make these sides longer and go up from that point Mine's got a few little flaws, like that side there doesn't go right down as much as I would have wanted, but I'm really not that worried. It's a lovely handmade piece. Yeah, you put a handle on that, you could turn it into a really lovely vanity, and there are just so many ways to evolve this and to add to it. Um, it's certainly given me now more inspiration to make some really nice desk storage um, in other ways. So it's so nice now that I know that all of my mini cubes can be stored in this, because I've got... Like I said, this will hold 120 of those square ones, but then lots of other things as well. So, but the drawers, they come out really nicely and I've got a few other obviously bits in here as well, but it's all moved around. So I need to, you know, do that again. And I need to line the inside of that one um, just to finish it off. I've got lots of scraps from that paper pad. I hope you like my storage idea for the Paper Craft Society cubes. That's what's inspired it. And for those of you saying to me, Sam, why don't you make one? Why didn't I think of that? So I hope you like what I've come up with. It's nice and simple, but I like that you've got the I, you know, the option to just have it as shelving. I'm still, whether or not I will evolve this, if I feel I need to add more, I might add shelving to the top of this. I think that could look quite nice. Or maybe to the bottom, so that I still get to see that lovely pattern paper. And then you've got shelves underneath this. I think that could look... Yeah, I think that could look really nice. So I hope you've enjoyed it. Please give me a thumbs up if you have and consider subscribing to my channel so you get to see more fun tutorials. As always, all of this will be shared below in my links and on my blog, all the product and everything that I've used. And yeah, thank you for watching. See you soon. Bye.